We're still in conversation with Dr. Anthony James Katniss, and writing a book is always difficult, so let's find out more about the books he's written. So I've heard you've written about 13 books in your career, and you're working on more. Tell us a little bit about your career as an author. Well, I'm a, I'm a techie. <laughs> I always have been, always will be. So my first books were pretty uh, sophisticated for the time, and they had to do with computer modeling of, of transportation, of housing, uh, of construction. Uh, they had to do with um, the idea that we can use technology uh, and computers to solve very complex problems. Maybe I went too far uh, that way because I, I wasn't completely naive. I knew that all these complicated problems couldn't be solved with technology alone, but I thought it could make a difference. And then I met a very important man who was also an engineer. He was a nuclear engineer when I was at Georgia Tech. And, and he looked at my work and read my books, and, and he told me something that, that's really affected my entire thinking. He said, you're a very good technological person, but what you now have to develop is a, a sense of the human condition, of human beings, of politics, as goals and desires, and you have to temper your technology with the human touch. Uh, that man's name was Jimmy Carter. He uh, was the governor of Georgia, then of course became the president of the United States. So Jimmy Carter had a profound effect on my intellectual development. So then I wrote a series of books on politics, uh, how urban planners and engineers must deal with politicians to solve problems uh, in cities. So it kind of took me on a whole different direction. And then uh, the most recent books uh, I did were textbooks. Uh, one was an introduction to architecture, then an introduction to urban planning, uh, and then uh, another book dealing with uh, real estate development. I became very interested in uh, that subject as well. Uh, you might be interested to know I'm working on a book now on leadership. Uh -oh. does, does leadership make a difference, especially in the kinds of things that we do? in technology. So I guess it all comes back to that idea that uh, technology can can be used for great good or, or great evil and it's leadership that will make sure that we get the right direction with our technology. So I'm, I'm studying that now and uh, working with a couple people and uh, maybe we'll get that book out and that sounds Not really too interesting. Future. That's definitely mm -hmm. leadership books are something mm -hmm. that are coming up greatly these times, and everyone wants to see the different mm -hmm. perspectives of becoming a leader. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll take a turn from the academics, and we'll talk a little bit about your personal life, and tell us a little bit about how you met uh, Mrs. Katniss. Ah, well, I was a Yankee, <laughs> and uh, then I went to school in Wisconsin, and then my first university job was at, at Georgia Tech oh, uh, okay. in Atlanta. And uh, shortly after I had uh, arrived there, uh, I went to a, a party, and I met this uh, young woman who had gone to the University of Georgia. Now, as you know, Georgia and Georgia Tech are fierce rivals right. in, in athletics, so we didn't hit it off that well uh, to <laughs> begin with, but we were kind of interested in each other, and that, that developed into a, uh, uh, a very successful marriage. Uh, three children, um, all grown now, and uh, she's my true uh, partner in life, and, uh, and uh, it turned out just great, and, and that's very important. I, I think you really do have to find a, a soulmate to, uh, to get you uh, to reach the kind of heights that you're capable of. As a mm -hmm. source of inspiration, maybe. Mm -hmm. A true muse. <laughs> <laughs> true muse. So how many years have you been married? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Almost 40 years. Wow. Well, congratulations for that. Of course, I was just a child when I got married. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, um, what, what, what do your ch uh, children do right now? Uh, they're, uh, they're all spread out. Uh, one, uh, one works at Columbia University in the Earth Institute, so he's very... Uh, much involved in the uh, the work of uh, that very prestigious group that looks at everything from climate change to economic development in Africa. He's he's just done a terrific job. 
Uh, another son uh, is in New Jersey, and he's a landscape architect. And then a third son is in uh, Carrollton, Georgia, and he's an antiques dealer. Oh, so wow. we've gone all over the place yeah. with our children. <laughs> Wide <laughs> range. So now let's bring back the focus to Florida Tech and tell us how uh, you know how you ended up in Florida Tech. Uh -huh. You know. I've spent a lot of my career in Florida. Uh, I've been an associate dean of engineering at the University of Miami. Uh, I was the dean of uh, architecture at the University of Florida for a number of years. And then I was president of Florida Atlantic University uh, for a number of years. And I always thought that the Florida Institute of Technology was a gem. And I was always so impressed with what it offered, its location, its structure. And then when I was contacted by the um, executive headhunters that uh, were hired to pursue this search, uh, I was very interested. I, uh, I probably uh, could have stayed at, at FAU forever, but I thought this was such a unique opportunity. Now, it was much smaller. Um, FAU has 25,000 students, so it's five times right. what Florida Tech is. But it seemed to me that the analogy I used is that I was captain of a 747 for a long time, but this is a shuttle. Uh, this is a rocket. Uh, this is maneuverable. We can, we can take this university places. We can do things. And I truly believe that this university has the potential of becoming one of the top 10 technological universities in the world.